Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be going through cupping the face. Now, this is an interesting area to cup. One reason in particular is because it is super duper easy to bruise the face, so we have to be very cautious. We're going to go through a number of different techniques, largely to treat temporomandibular joint dysfunction or part of the overall treatment of TMJD. I would never really use facial cupping alone to treat TMJD. I'd use it in conjunction with something like intraoral massage. But we can use facial cupping for much more than that. One of the most popular uses is facial rejuvenation, or what some people will call a natural facelift. Now I use air quotes because it's not actually a facelift. It sometimes feels like it, and yes, we are going to lift the face, but really, part of the reason it is so effective as a facial rejuvenation technique is because it brings fresh blood to the face, which is just a good thing. So with that, let's jump into my demonstration on how to cup the jaw and the face. So let's jump into these techniques, but the first thing, and perhaps the most important thing, is making sure that we are using the right type of lubricant. Now, many people have incredibly sensitive skin on their face, so I wouldn't suggest you use the regular lotion or lubricant that you would use when you're doing, say, a full body massage. What I would suggest is you get yourself a very high quality face lotion. The one that I would recommend is by La Roche-Posay. You can get it on Amazon. It's relatively inexpensive, and it is great for all forms of sensitive skin. You don't have to use this one if you want to. There's a link down below, but it's the one I would suggest. Next, we need to talk about the cups. You will not be using the regular cups that you would use on the rest of the body. The face, it bruises super easy. So we have to use a totally different set of cups. There are two different types of cups that I'm going to demonstrate with. The first are going to be these more oval shaped face cups. And the second are going to be these glass face cups, both of which you'll find the links down below in the description as well, and you could get a 15% discount if you use the code AIM online with Global Cupping. Now, that's not sponsored by them, it's just a coupon code that you can use to get 15% off. Now, out of those two, I actually prefer these oval ones. I just find them a little bit easier to move around and manipulate, uh, but that being said, both of them are equally as effective. Even though these apply a very small amount of suction, they can indeed cause bruising, so we have to be very cautious. I do not suggest any form of static cupping on the face. The only type of cupping I would suggest is very gentle moving cupping. So with that, let's jump into the demonstration of how to cup the jaw and the face. So one of the first things I'm going to check is, does my client have oily skin? If they do, perfect. We don't need to apply anything else. Quite frankly, most people are going to have enough natural oils on their face that we don't really need to apply anything. Now, you might have some leftover oil on your hands from the rest of the massage that you've done, so I'd suggest wiping it off on a towel before you move into the face. So, just checking out, seeing if they have any lotion or any oil on their skin, and Brian has lotion on her skin, so I don't need to apply anything. If I were to, we would start with that step. So the very first thing I'm going to do is choose my cup size. This set of oval cups comes with four different sizes. We're going to have the largest size, and then of course we're going to step down in sizes until we get to the very smallest size. So when I'm working on the jaw, the masseter in specific right now, I'm going to choose one of the larger sized ones. I'll show you two different types of cupping on the face. The first is going to be not necessarily the moving cupping, but what we would call flash cupping. Now, flash cupping is where we put the cup on and remove it quite quickly. And it's very stimulating. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we just squeeze the cup like this. It's not very hard to squeeze. We apply it to the tissue and then we let off our pressure. But I don't suggest letting go of the cup because we do not want to have any static cupping. So if I'm doing flash cupping, I'll just connect like this and then pull. And if you find you pull and it doesn't want to let go, it means you're using a bit too much suction. So just back off on the suction a little bit and you could do flash cupping like this. Now again, this could be a very stimulating technique and we're gonna pay very close attention to any discoloration. So even as I start to get the most gentle reddening of the skin, that's telling me I need to back off a little bit. I'm not going to be doing too much more in this area. 
However, I will continue with the demonstration, but always paying very, very close attention to any discoloration. We do not at all want to get even close to causing bruising on the face, and we do not need to. So that's one form. That's going to be flash cupping. Now, moving cupping, sometimes called dynamic cupping, is going to be where we apply the cup and we gently move it. Now, when it comes to direction, that's actually an interesting conversation that you need to have with your client. Some people prefer to have the cupping movement go from superior to inferior. Others prefer inferior to superior. So you would try both on your client and then just ask them, which one of these two do you prefer? I myself, I actually like the superior to inferior, mostly just because it feels better on my little whiskers. But we'll try it on Brienne and see which one she prefers. So I'm just going to start by applying the cup up here and I'm gonna move down in this direction, and then I'm gonna move back up. And I just want you to pay attention to which one of those two you prefer, all right? Okay. All right. So there's top to bottom, and now bottom to top. Sometimes when you're using gentle pressure, the cup slips off, and that's totally okay. All right, which one of those two did you prefer? I like them both, but bottom to top was more intense. All right, so we had more intense, but liking both more intense means I need to pay much closer attention to any discoloration. So since she liked both, we'll just move up and down and up and down, just working in this masseter area. And after that, we'll shift our attention more into the temporalis. Okay, so gently applying the cup. Paying super close attention to any discoloration. We're doing okay so far. Some people really like that lifting feeling. Now that lifting going inferior to superior, some people say that it feels like a natural facelift. And I'm reluctant to say that because truth be told, that's not at all what's happening, but it can kind of feel like that, this lifting sensation. All right. Now, I'm going to show you very briefly with the glass cups because perhaps that's what you prefer. But before we do that, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. This video was sponsored by Jane EMR, which is an all-in-one complete software package for virtually any kind of wellness practitioner. I mean, when I say all-in-one, I really mean it. They've got all of your bases covered, everything from booking your client in to following up with them through client communication. But what I really want to talk about is their newest feature, which is an integration with clinic sites. Building a website is one of the most challenging parts of being a wellness practitioner. That's assuming you need to build one. It can cost thousands of dollars and take a tremendous amount of time, but this new feature, which was just released, is amazing because truly with just one click of a button, you can have a fully populated website that is completely integrated with your Jane EMR system. So if you are interested in learning more about this, check out the link in the description and make sure to use the code AIM1MO to get a one month grace period on your new Jane account. Now the glass cups come in a variety of sizes from the very large all the way down to the very tiny, similar to what the oval cups had. So I'm going to choose a cup size that seems to fit the size of the masseter, which is going to be this one, I think. And they work in the exact same way. You just give them a little squeeze like this, let go, and that's going to create suction. Now, because we're already getting some redness, I'm gonna be very light on this. So I squeeze just a little bit and apply the smallest amount of suction. You see, we can do the flash cupping on here as well. And we can also move. All right, now let's move into the temporalis. Now the interesting thing about the temporalis is it is a massive muscle. It encompasses the entire temporal fossa, which quite frankly is going to be about the size of the palm of my hand. Like it's, it's massive, but we can really only access this tiny little bit right here because of course the hair is going to get in the way. So with that, I'm going to once again choose my cup size and I think I'll choose the slightly smaller cup and the same thing goes, I can do flash cupping in that tiny little area, or I can apply the cup and do some gentle moving cupping. 
Now sometimes what I just found is as I started inferior and moved superior, I found the cup slipped off very quickly. So in this case, I would just continue to go superior to inferior. Just find it a little bit easier. And like with any technique that we do, no matter what, we're always going to check in with our client, make sure they're feeling okay, make sure it's not painful or uncomfortable. Some people really don't like it, so you just check in with your client. Now that's working on the jaw. And as I mentioned earlier, this is something I do all the time when I'm working on clients who have temple mandibular joint dysfunction. It could be a phenomenal addition to any intraoral work that you might be doing, as it is going to be usually quite relaxing and also incredibly effective. So let's shift now our attention from working just on the jaw to maybe working on the rest of the face. The areas that we'll work on are going to be the forehead, we're going to work on the cheeks right here, right on the zygomatic arch, and we'll work just a little bit on the chin as well, going up the jawline. Now the main reason we would be using cupping on the rest of the face is on the forehead, I found it can help sometimes with tension headaches, people who are stressed out a lot as well. A lot of people, when they're really stressed, they're gonna, eyes are gonna go up like this. Whether it's like I'm doing or relatively subtle, oftentimes stress is going to cause the muscles of the eyebrows to raise up, strangely enough, creating a fair bit of tension in here. Now, of course, it feels great to get a face massage and have somebody do gentle wiping on the forehead. Wonderful. But the forehead also responds incredibly well to cupping. Now on the forehead, since it's, of course, pretty bony, I'm not going to be using these glass cups. I find they do not contour to the shape of the skull. So I'm going to set these aside and I'm going to move back to using these silicone oval cups. Once again, I'll choose the cupping size, but I actually kind of like this small one for working on the forehead. If you have two small ones, you could do two at once. So with this small one, I could just start here gently between the eyebrows and slowly move out. And you can see it takes very little pressure at all to start getting that little bit of redness. And that's really all we want. We don't want any more aggressive than that. And just a tiny little bit of suction. Or you can use both. So I'll take both cups, apply them right beside each other. And I'll just move out in either direction, just like this. can feel really relaxing. And we can move in other directions as well with both these cups. We can move up, we can do one at a time. Noticing that we have only very mild redness. And quite frankly, that's plenty. We don't need to go any more than that. Any more than that, we do indeed start risking bruising, which as I've said, ad nauseum, we're going to avoid at all costs. So without doing suction, just as review, you can use one cup and go medial to lateral. And you know what? You can try and go lateral to medial, but I find you get a lot of bunching. You see how the tissue is bunching up there as I go lateral to medial? It makes the cup slip off. So it's just harder to go from lateral to medial. You can certainly do it. It's up to you. All right, so we could go medial to lateral. We could use two cups at the same time. We could go inferior to superior, and again, going superior to inferior, I find you get a lot of tissue bunching, which makes the cups pop off. Let's now move into the cheeks. With the cheeks, I also like to use these smaller cups, and we can, as before, do one side at a time, or we could do both sides, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to do one side. Now, I do not usually suggest moving superior to inferior, because it kind of pulls on the eyelid, and for a lot of people, it could feel weird and uncomfortable. So when I'm working on the zygomatic area, the cheek area, I'm pretty much always going to be going inferior to superior, or I could go medial to lateral. Nice and gentle, making these tiny little strokes, paying very close attention. You can already see a bit of redness occurring, so. Yeah. Sometimes it feels good too to get into the nasal lay-by right here, but depending on the shape of your client's nose, that can be a little bit difficult. Maybe you could just do a little flash cup in there. Great. All right, I'm sure it's making sense. It's relatively simple once you've seen the demonstration and you know how to use the right cups. So lastly, let's move into the chin and the jaw. And I'm pretty sure you can guess exactly what I'm going to be doing. Once again, using these oval cups because they will connect with the contours a lot more successfully. I'm going to start medial, 
apply a little bit of pressure on the cup, place the cup where I want it, and then slowly running it from medial to lateral, following that jawline in, just like before on the forehead. You can use both cups at the same time. And you can even move up like that, and you'll find the cups tend to pop off right around that zygomatic arch. Now when I'm doing facial cupping, uh, one of the things that I'm attempting to do is I'm not painting the face per se, but I'm imagining that I am. And you say we've got a little bit of redness on the chin, the forehead's pretty much disappeared in redness, the jaw is still a little bit red. But what I'm attempting to do is make sure that I get the entire face and just very, very mild redness. We don't need any more than mild, but I really want to make sure I contact every part of the face. We could go above the upper lip here, right? But again, very gentle in these tiny little strokes. Wonderful. So one thing we need to address, particularly for any of you lymphatic aficionados out there, is the direction in which I'm moving. So as you know, within the face, the lymph is going to be draining in two different areas. We've got the cone down here in which the lymph fluid is going to drain into the chin area, and then we've got pretty much all the rest of the face in which the lymph fluid is going to drain behind the ear and into the neck. So if I'm following the rules of any form of lymphatic massage, I want to be helping the fluid move in the direction it's naturally flowing. And yet, throughout the majority of these demonstrations, I was moving inferior to superior. There were some exceptions, but a lot of it was moving inferior to superior. So one very important thing, and I suggest this for any type of cupping that you're going to be performing, is once you are finished with the cups, whether or not you know how to perform lymphatic drainage or any type of lymphatic massage, finish, finish off with very gentle strokes, just imagining you're moving fluid down into those watershed areas. And again, you could follow the very specific techniques if you know them, but if this isn't your wheelhouse, no problem. Just finish off with these very gentle superior to inferior strokes.